to the next video in today's video i will show you how to embed a gado game inside a jetpack compose jetpack compose application for native android uh, so if you are interested in how to embed it for old views xml layout i have already done a video on that so you can uh, search for that on my channel but this video would be about jetpack compose for a native android application now if you don't know what is a gado uh, game like a gado is an engine game engine for which you can develop 2d 3d games now developing a 2d 3d or a triple a game would be extremely difficult in like your, your traditional native android application with kotlin you require a game engine for it so you what i so what uh, my plan is to develop like i won't develop a game like i won't i am not really good at gado but i want to help those guys who are good at gado but not good in native android or vice versa so suppose if you have a gado developer and you have a native android app developer so but if you want the native so you have an app and in which you want to embed a game so this functionality might be helpful so if you want to know more you can just read this documentation i won't bore you with all the details i will uh, sh uh, and also i have written uh, i have written all these points of my documentation inside this uh, text edit file so i will refer that instead of reading through the documentation so yeah let's get started without any more time wastage so firstly i have created a, a jetpack compose application and firstly you will have to copy this line of code so this all steps are specified in the docs you can go through this if you want to so i will just copy paste it okay inside my activity uh, next what it says okay so at the time of this recording i am using gado 4.2.0 and here you can see that so i have copied this dependency so this dependency is of gado and i will just copy it inside my build.gradle.kts but if you are using future word version of gado make sure you go to maven central and search for this this version might have been updated but at the time of this recording this is 4.2.0 next we have to add this so because we will be uh, right, uh, like uh, uh, storing or uh, keeping all our code of gado inside this main android folder itself uh, ac actually specifically inside the assets folder and we don't want our android project to ignore those files because there are some uh, different files in gado that's why we have to add this rule if you check in the documentation uh, they have mentioned this as aapt options but that is deprecated uh, now the new thing is android resources but this thing remains the same okay this is done next what it says is okay create an assets folder so i will just create an assets folder for this oh i will sync now click on sync now and i'll also create a folder assets folder i'll click on finish okay this is done now uh, this code is of old xml view right i want jetpack compose i have already created some sample code for me to help so typically uh, if you want to embed a native uh, like an old xml view in jetpack compose you will make of this make use of this android view so i will just copy paste this code and i will sh uh, explain it to you guys what exactly i have done so i go i will go to main activity here and here you can see this is by default created once you create a jetpack compose application so what i will do i will just remove this i will remove uh, this as well okay and over here i will remove this and i don't want this preview as well so this uh, so here you can see i have one composable i'll just copy paste this over here so firstly i'm using a scaffold that is a jetpack compose component then i'm using a column because i want uh, 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 elements should be one below the other I, mean, I have added some padding okay now this is a text component from jetpack compose itself because i want to show you to you guys that it is possible uh, to have some jetpack compose elements and then in between wherever you want you can embed a gado view now this android view is your gado view so here you can see this android view is also from uh, native android itself then i'm using a frame layout this is from native android itself and here you if you have done a little bit of xml you might be knowing this and i'm uh, assigning a match parent of uh, to our frame layout but if you want you can use wrap content or whatever height or width you want to give it so i'm assigning uh, the maximum width and height and here uh, i'm using fragment activity so here first what i'll have to do is i will have to copy this fragment activity so go at the top and instead of component activity you will have to use fragment activity i'll add this dependency as well so just click on this add this so th it might have added a dependency over here uh, 
somewhere over here yeah so this dependency has been added okay next okay so this has been resolved and here this has been resolved now this godot fragment is from the uh, library which we have added over here implementation okay so i will add this godot fragment as well and here you decide what how much width or height you want i am taking fill max width and height i am giving it as 400 dp and below this uh, godot we again i am added some text component from jetpack compose just so that uh, i can have this comp godot view in between two jetpack compose elements so i have done this okay let's go to the documentation again what it says so we have done with this again this is for old xml view we don't have to do this okay we are done with this this okay now we have to create our godot project so what you will have to do uh, you will just have to if you don't have godot engine you can download it and inside this assets folder you will have to create your godot game but make sure you don't create any subfolders inside it like whatever is the folder structure of your godot game it should be directly inside the assets folder so i will create a simple game and uh, and i will show it to you how it looks here as you can see i have created my godot project inside the asset folders okay and here you can see there is no subfolders within the assets folder now if i open my godot project inside the godot engine here you can see that i have just added a gltf model so the uh, so the game which i am creating it's not really a game all i will do is that i will uh, display this uh, gltf model inside our 3d scene so this will be like a suppose uh, it would be it would be like an example of embedding a 3d game inside your jetpack compose application so i will just quickly create one uh, scene for us like a, uh, consider it as a game but this can be anything so i am showing it to you 3d but it can be 2d as well so i'll just click on this 3d scene i will click over here add sun to scene then i click over here add environment to scene then i will click over here i'll add some camera as well camera 3d and i will move this camera a little back okay so that my object is uh, visible then i will click on Control S. I will save this scene i will add some script file to this i will click over here I click this so the script has been added now i will just copy paste this code uh, from my huh, because i'm not really that good in gado so i will tell you what exactly this code does okay i will just copy all it does is that it uh, displays a gltf model in, in our case it is a glb model so this glb model i have downloaded it, it from kenny.nl if you are curious you can just follow this website kenny's food kit pack or you can use your own gltf model or glb model doesn't really matter so i will just remove some code okay i don't need this uh, this is apple okay this is the name of our gltf model we don't need this as well so i'll remove this okay so okay so here you can see i have created one node and inside that we are loading our gltf model of apple.glp which you can see over here next inside process like it it runs every frame per second so i'm just rotating our apple gltf model and this is the code for actually loading the gltf model so if you see our gltf path is present inside res colon slash slash folder that's why that's how it is next what you have to do i'll just save this go to top at project project settings okay then i'll click on window then inside window now it depends on you what width and height you want to give so i'll just keep the width as 400 height as 800 okay and it depends on what kind of android device you are running on and what should be the landscape or portrait mode and the orientation if you see i'll just keep it as portrait if you keep this as landscape make sure you change your orientation mode to landscape in native inside your native android application as well okay i think you can do it via android uh, manifest.xml i'll click on close now i'll click on this run button okay select current so here you can see that it is running uh, pretty okay so here i am inside still inside the godot editor and what i will do is i will now simply uh, run this application inside my android uh, real android device so uh, so i have started the uh, product project building and i'll just show you uh, with while it is building i want to tell you a few more things like uh, once the output is uh, visible to you the output might be a little laggy because i have connected via wi-fi debugging that's why it might be a little laggy also i am running it in debug mode so uh, you will have to search for the godot documentation on how to strip unnecessary things from the 3d engine uh, 
uh, otherwise uh, you might see some performance uh, issues and also uh, you can uh, use minify enabled on the, your android side as well uh, in release mode so that will improve the performance as well the next thing is my android device is very old uh, it is like three three and a half years old android device and it is very cheap as well uh, that's why it is uh, if you try this on a pixel or a one plus device i i'm pretty sure the output will be great and also there are a lot of a lot of things that are going inside the uh, work that is going inside the gado renderer so if you're curious uh, that should resolve as well so here you can see we see a black screen at the start because the godot fragment is still loading it takes some time but you can see the text hello from jetpack compose hello again from jetpack compose that is working fine and so here you can see this is our 3d model uh, like the, our godot project running completely fine inside jetpack compose so this is the one way i want to show you guys another way as well so here you might have seen that i have directly embedded our godo fragment in this so you can do this way there is another way if you are curious you can use something like this okay next i will what i'll do i will create this my fragment new kotlin file class my fragment this will allow you to have much more control over your godo fragment okay now i have created a code for this as well i will just copy paste this code now this is native android development i won't explain much because i think mostly android developers will be watching this video even that is the case i'll explain you a few things and also uh, i will first create all the files so you again you have to create one more file so of this my frame fragment layout so what you have to do go to res you will have to create this layout folder so new android resource directory layout click ok then right click new layout resource file i'll name this as my fragment layout okay i'll click on this now i have written code for this as well i will just copy paste it okay so this is the frame layout so if you are creating your own fragment so we require a frame layout again uh, to uh, you know display our godo fragment and if you see this is my id for our fragment and, I, and I, i'm occupying the entire width and height okay and here you can see all errors have gone so what i'm basically doing i'll just uh, remove this so first you will if you are creating your own fragment you will have to extend godo host then i have we, we will have to create our godo fragment here we are inflating our uh, layout fragment so if you want you can add some text to you as well if you want some native components if you want to but i have kept it simple so this is our frame layout uh, my fragment layout sorry and inside once view is created we need to initialize our godot fragment using the id which we have specified to our frame layout so that's what i'm doing over here and as well as over here and we also have to override this method so that godot know which fragment it is and now if you try to run it you should see the same output there is no difference in output but i think this way might be uh, better if you want to communicate from your native android view to your godot view and vice versa i think if you use this way like this way it might be difficult so this is the output as you can see it takes a little time to load but i am pretty sure in release mode at least it will be much more faster and if you have a better android device it will be even faster so here you can see it is still loading same thing as usual so yeah uh, that's it thank you for watching bye